Hi, I'm Chris. <laughs> Hello, Helena. How are you? <laughs> Good. I had a nice, hey, I had a really cool drive over here. Um, I was co how, many, how many people have driven the Swan Highway? Highway 83? <laughs> Everybody? Yeah. Well, I saw a bobcat on the way here, and I stopped my uh, diesel pickup truck in the middle of the road, and I took his picture. And here it is. I got, I got him. I don't know if you can see it, but there, well, the front row can at least. And I mean, I did all right, huh? So, so it paid, it paid for itself just to, yeah. You know, I mean, how, how many people have even seen a bobcat? Oh, wow. A lot more than I thought. Yeah. Um, th this is like the second one I've seen, and I've only seen them near the road. And I've hiked like almost every trail on Glacier Park. Um, a little bit about myself. Um, I grew up on a dairy farm outside of Buffalo, New York. I know, I know, I know. Uh, and, and, but I loved to fish and hunt. And my, and my grandfather, he would always say, now don't you go taking off to the woods because the, the farm had a woods. I need you to help me with something. So I was always the kid taking off. And so by the time I turned 16, I knew I was not going to be a dairy farmer. Um, so... I, got, I, I married a woman who lived down in the southern tier of New York State, and there happened to be trout streams around there, and I pretty much got married and then abandoned her and went fishing most of the time. Uh, we had three kids, and uh, she was pregnant with the third kid, and I walked in the house one day and said, honey, we're moving to Montana. I got a job out here. And, and, and I came to the Hungry, and that's how I got to the Hungry Horse News, and she just sat there and cried. And I said, <laughs> and, and I said Qu quit, quit it. Quit it, we're going. And um, that kid is the kid that hikes with me now. And, and, uh, uh, <clears throat> so, yeah, it, it was, it, 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 I wish it went smooth, but it didn't. It didn't go smooth at all. Um, he turned out, uh, my two, I have two daughters and my son, and my son's autistic. So that was a big challenge to begin with. And, and one of the um, things that you do with autistic kids is that, you know, they're, they're very stimulatory and, um, and they, uh, they don't handle like loud noises and certain like fluorescent lights. These lights would drive me nuts right now. And, and so, so what I did was I took him out in the woods when he was little, when he was three. And, and, we, and I would hike with him all the time. I wrote a book about it called Boy Wonder and the Big Burns. Um, and that was about wildfires because I was doing a book on wildfires. I dragged this kid along with me, literally dragged him along. And uh, he had all kinds of weird things he would do. He would like... Like for a while there, he would carry, he would just, um, um, for like a year, he carried around an orange, and we would have to switch out the oranges. And um, uh, he would drag a stick, and they would progressively get bigger, and I'd have to, uh, so it was kind of cool, uh, kind of weird, um, so, it, and he's still a little bit uh, different, uh, but now he's 18, and he loves to hike, and he can hike faster and farther than I can, and he's a real pleasure to hike with, because A, I'm grumpy, and B, he's quiet. Uh, <laughs> So, and that, and that is really, uh, it's a great combination. Um, so he went probably on about half of the hikes that, um, for this book. And uh, what, <clears throat> to give you a little background on the book, uh, this is through Glacier Park in 1915. This is, a re, um, this is actually an old paperback. I don't know what year this was printed. I actually have an original one, and all the little sticky notes are where I was uh, marking uh, things as I worked on the book. Um, this is probably, uh, you can probably see it in the front row here, um, this is probably Howard Eaton at Granite Park. And we'll, we'll show you a bigger picture of him later. Um, so what happened was, was that my publisher, a friend of his, gave him this book, and he read it, and I'm in a meeting one day, and he's like, Chris, I want you to go redo this book. And I'm like, oh, man. And, and I wasn't really, I, didn't, I, I thought it was a good idea. But the year before that, I had retraced Bob Marshall's hike from the Swan uh, through the Bob and then into the missions. And, and that kind of um, took its toll. And I just didn't want to do another gigantic journey. But I thought about it more and more, you know, the winter goes on. And then you know, February rolled around and I got to work on the book and just kept going with it. Um, and I started in February in, in Many Glacier, and, and um, I also talked the boss into just talking a little bit about equipment real quick. Uh, I talked the boss into buying a 5x7 uh, camera from 
1915 time period era. And this is a 1905 Conley. Um, this is not the original lens, but the, the camera I found in a, in, a, in a camera store in Kalispell. And uh, then I put a little bit more modern lens in it, but not a very modern lens. This whole thing is only worth about $250. Um, but it's a 5x7. It's just like the cameras that they would have used back in 1905. Except they probably would have shot on glass plates instead of film. Um, I, I took this camera and this tripod to Granite Park for one of the pictures that you'll see later on. Um, the kid carried the tripod and I carried the camera. <laughs> uh, there's, more, there's more to that. Uh, and then, of course, um, so, so generally what I do is, this is a, this pack, by the way, is made in Bozeman. It's a um, <clears throat> Mystery Ranch Trance Triple X, and um, it's gotten wet, and it, yeah, it's, it's, I think it's done. I think it's, I, you know, I think it's ripe. <clears throat> and, and so I load this up with uh, camera gear and stuff, and, and one of my main cameras, to be honest with you, is... Not that I was lying, but, but, this, but this, is a, this is a Leica. Um, and so this is actually a Leica digital camera. And this is my, probably my favorite camera. Um, most of the scenics that you'll see in here were taken with this camera. Uh, really reason, the reason why I really like it is that, A, it's a rain, first off, the Leica glass is the best glass on Earth, okay? And then secondly, um, it's a rangefinder camera which means that there are no mirrors in it like a DSLR. So I can hand hold it at slow shutter speed. So if I want uh, effects like a, uh, uh, um, like the, the water just looking like silk, I can still sit on my hands and knees and shoot it like a 15th, an eighth of a second, that kind of thing. So this was one of the cameras that I took. Um, and then I throw this bag in here with a bunch of stuff. And then we throw that camera in there. And then we throw this camera in there. And then imagine uh, throwing your tent, your sleeping bag, all your food, and then putting it on. And then I get this up, up here like that. And, and then uh, you get ready for your hike, and you're all ready to go. And, you know, and then let's put another eight pounds on there. Okay. And you start out like this, and you get down. You know. <laughs> by time, by time you get to you get to camp, and I'm I'm usually like this, and the people are like, "Boy, that camera looks heavy. Boy, that's quite a camera." And after you've heard that probably 30 or 40 times in a day, you you know you really don't want to talk to people anymore. <laughs> um, this is not this is not typical uh, camera gear stuff. Um, things go wrong when you're out there, and that's a monopod. Oh, by the way, that's a. Let's see here. We have a function. Um, that is a uh, Nikon uh, D800 with a. Just a second here. Let me mic back up here. How's that? That's good. Yeah. Okay. All right, so this is a Nikon uh, D800. This is one of the cameras that I had. Uh, and this is a, a Nikon 400 millimeter lens. Um, I like to refer to it as bear insurance, okay? Um, basically, the bear can be 100 yards away and still get a pretty decent picture. Uh, this is a manual focus lens. And yes, it does weigh about eight pounds. What happened was is that the beginning of a 35 mile hike, I got basically um, two miles into it, and this broke in two. And this is made out of aluminum, so I had to make do with what I, what I had. So I went tromping around in the woods to find a stick in Glacier. Um, so this, yes, this is government property. Um, and and la later on, Mr. Sullivan will be giving me a ticket. Um, but I, I stuck this Sullivan. Uh, so I stuck this, uh, uh, I found, I went to look for a stick, and immediately, um, found another stick that went completely through my pants. <laughs> and then <laughs> I found this one. I stuck it in there, um, and it 
held up for 35 miles um, up and over the Continental Divide twice, and I can't get it out. <laughs> That's how good it is. I cannot, I cannot get it out of there. <clears throat> so <clears throat> so I, I, I take it with me to these talks. I don't use it anymore. I bought another one. <clears throat> excuse me, excuse me. Okay, so um, here we are. We're, go we're gonna, let's go on this journey. This is uh, Mary Roberts Reinhardt in, um, in camp. This is the uh, original photo from the book. And I have my little clip pointer here. Um, that would be Howard Eaton. And I just, when I was out in the lobby, they were showing me a, another picture that actually had a caption. And I believe that's Mary. But here's a, here's a better picture of Mary. Um, that's, that's Mary on the right. <laughs> <laughs> And um, my wife said, don't tell that joke. <laughs> it's not funny. Okay. This is what the park looked like. And this is actually a map from 1925. Um, so it's, it's got some of the roads on it. Oops. Yeah, yeah. And this, is, this would be East Glacier right here. And they basically, they started here. And, and, and I had to, I had to, retrace the journey as best as I could from the book. This book has no maps, has no real detailed information, but what it does have is it mentions all the passes they went over. And so from there, you, can, you get a pretty good idea where they went. And what I think what they did was they went in, this being um, East Glacier, to Medicine. They probably dropped uh, over the divide um, in this area somewhere. And they did the, Col I'm almost positive they did the Cold Creek Nyack Loop. And then they came out again. Well, and the reason I say that is because they went over Surprise Pass. Um, and, and the Park Service uh, has all these old maps um, in their archives. And so Deirdre Shaw, who's their archivist, um, she pulled out the 14 map for me. And there actually was no set trail over Cutbank Pass. They mentioned Cutbank Pass in the, in the book. But there wasn't a, a trail that I could find on the map. There was no trail on the 1914 map uh, going over Cutbank um, I'm sorry, it wasn't going over Cutbank Pass. There wasn't one going over Surprise Pass. So, um, but obviously there had to have been something there because they're a horse party. There, there was 40, I think 42 people in the party. So um, as near as we could tell, they did the Naya Coal Creek Loop. Um, that's one, one section that I was not able to do was the Nyack Loop, or the Nyack section of the Coal Creek, because it, um, as all you were pro many of you are probably aware, it was on fire in the summer of 19, or I'm sorry, 2015. So then they probably went up and over, where's Lake McDonald? Is that? Yeah. Um, so they probably went this way. They come uh, just a, uh, they, Come over gun they went over Gunsight Pass, we know that for a fact. They came down to Lake McDonald Lodge. Um, we know they went along St. Mary. The Sun Road wouldn't have existed in 1915. Um, and then uh, they probably wandered around up here. Uh, as near as I can tell, the farthest north they got was Many Glacier. And they talk about going over a Ptarmigan Pass. Um, I did not go, I, there's no Ptarmigan Pass in the park that I'm aware of, so I, went, I did go to Ptarmigan Tunnel thinking that maybe that's where they went. That was the, big, that was the only big question mark I had, was where was this ptarmigan pass? Um, and then, so I mapped all this out, and I got 160 miles um, if I did basically one way to get to Many Glacier. And I really don't know how they came back down to East Glacier. Um, but I do know that they definitely went over. Uh, this would be Granite Park up here, and this is Many Glacier up uh, here. And, and um, we know they, were, they went over Sai Pass, too, because uh, we saw pictures of it. Um, we know they went along, um, we know they went along St. Mary Lake. But the, bit, the main journey, long and short of it is, they wandered around. They, the, the route, basically, was this part, portion of the park. And, and, then to, and then to cap it off, on the very last day, she, she floats the river. And I assume, she talks about the Flathead River, but I'm pretty sure she went floating on the Middle Fork. It would make sense. Because that would, that would take her back down to the train station. She could catch the train back to East Glacier and leave. 
So this is East Glacier. Um, this is the train station in East Glacier, and this is actually the moon rising over the, um, through the smoke of the fires. <laughs> and um, one of the first, one of the first, uh, my journey was not contiguous. I took, uh, it took me about 30 days in the field. Like I said, I started a little bit of it in February, but the mo I mostly started it in April. And one of the first places I wanted to do, go was, uh, I, um, this book has, is full of photos. The reprint that's out in front doesn't have the pictures, but the, if you happen to find an old, this older book, um, it has the original photos. And I tried to find every place in this book and re-photograph it. There's only a couple that I, that I couldn't, it wasn't that I, didn't, that I didn't get to or I couldn't find exactly. So one of the very first places I went to was Apostokee Falls. Now, the pe now, how many people have been to Apostokee Falls? Is it in Two Medicine? Okay, so if you do the trail in Apostokee Falls, though, you'll know that you can't see the plunge pool from the trail. Um, and so me and the kid, it was April, it was snowing horizontally, and we, and we crossed... And we took the big camera with us, so we, we had to hike from uh, Red Eagle, no, I'm sorry, what, what is it? It's Morning, e Morning Eagle Falls? Trick Falls. Uh, the, the, there was a gate over there. We went, we, we hiked up the road in the snow, and we got to the falls, and um, it was just howling. And we got there, I set up that camera, and sure enough, the wind was blowing so hard, it, it blew them, shook them, and none of them turned out. But just as I was about to leave, I... Uh, I took it, I was able to get another, I, would, I pulled out the Leica really quick because uh, not only, I got the falls, I didn't get the plunge pool, but I did get a bighorn sheep. Yeah. Which is pretty cool. And I, I know I, I always point them out, but um, when you make a really big print of this, and I have, you can really tell there's a sheep in the picture. <laughs> Hon honest to God. So then, so then we go, me and the kid, we go, we start back, and um, we, she go, we start in an East Glacier and uh, <clears throat> start on the Blackfeet Reservation and um, uh, head up to uh, Scenic Point. And one of the saddest parts of the journey was that in 1915, of course, this is either a white bark or a limber pine, and these would have been just spectacularly nice little forests and trees, and we've managed to kill them all with blister rust. So that was one of the big, big, changes that uh, I saw along the way. Um, and uh, on the way out of Scenic Point, that's a black bear. And to give you some idea of the magnification of, of this lens um, and, and, the, and the number of pixels in these cameras nowadays, this bear is two, two ridges away from me. Yeah. And then, yeah, he saw me all right, yeah. <laughs> there was a gully and then, I'm sorry, it was one ridge. There was a gully, and the bear was on top, and as soon as he saw me, he ran. Okay. So here we are on top of Scenic Point. That's the kid. Had a little visitor. Uh, go, um, golden Mantle Ground Squirrel. Yep. Okay. Then we're heading into Two Medicine. It's uh, Mount Sinipaw. And uh, uh, I believe that um, buckwheat. When you're hiking in the park, though, you never know what you're going to run into, and you really got to watch your step. <laughs> it's, uh, the only, the only, um, it's a western toad, and uh, the, the, the park surprisingly has a lot of western toads. And, uh, and on a different journey, actually, I hiked up to the Mount Brown Lookout, and I bet you I wasn't more than 500 vertical feet from the top, and there was a western toad up. So to give you some idea how far they're willing to hop. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is along the way to Upper Two Medicine Lake. We know Mary went there because um, there's a photo of her. And I think we get to it here in a minute. Uh, when, I'm, when I'm taking pictures, I try to um, not just get the landscapes but the details as well. So here we have, a, I believe, that I'm, uh, I'm drawing a blank on the flower and the butterfly film. But, and this is Mary at... Upper Two Medicine Lake looks pretty much the same today. Um, on the way back, uh, this would have been Pump Belly Pillar in the Eaton Party in 1915. And there's Pump Belly Pillar today. Pump Belly Pillar, uh, everyone, anybody familiar with it? 
um, this is the spire on the way. The, this is the big spire on the way to, to Upper Two Medicine Lake. And the Med lake is right, right in there. And, um, one of my favorite, uh, the reason why I carry this stuff really isn't so much th this big camera. Um, I'm not really a bear photographer. I don't go after bears, chase bears. I'm not uh, one of them bear nuts. But I really like photographing birds. And this is one of my favorite birds. That's a, anybody know this bird? Yeah, western tanager. Right. Neotropical bird. He goes to Costa Rica in the winter, in the winter time. And he comes all the way. <laughs> yes, exactly. And, he, and then they come all the way to, they'll go as far north as Alaska. What was, what was, another thing that was really interesting about um, the journey was that this is just below, um, oh, I'm drawing a blank on that pass. Uh, it's uh, the pass just above No Name Lake. Help me. Uh, uh, yeah, Dawson Pass. Okay, so this is the meadows at Dawson Pass in 1915. So, and you're thinking meadows, and look at how, look how there's hardly any trees. And then this, all right, now pay close attention to this snowfield here. This is Mount Helen. <clears throat> and this is the snowfield. And then here's the trail. You can see the trail. And so they're out in these meadows at Dawson Pass. And this is what it looked like in 2015. And so the snowfield looks almost exactly the same, but it's almost entirely trees. Because here I am at the top of the pass. And yes, I did turn my shirt around. That's my tag on the back because the front, the back said coach. <laughs> <laughs> and this is, uh, uh, that's no name there, and that would be uh, uh, lower two medicine here. Not lower two medicine, just two medicine, sorry. Yeah. From there, um, went over Cut Bank Pass. And this is a, this, if, you, if you really want to go on a trip in Glacier and not see anyone, go over Cut Bag Pass and drop down into Coal Creek um, and Surprise Pass. Because Surprise Pass is surprisingly gorgeous. And um, on this day, it was probably 95 in the shade, and yet I still had to watch my step because you never know when a <coughs> grouse will be in the way. Yes, a little, a little rough grouse there. And then on the way out, uh, the thunderstorms built but never rained. And this was the beginning of the fire season, just as I got out of there. Um, the one thing about this hike was that I hiked 35 miles basically from Two Medicine and then up and over uh, Cut Bank Pass down into Coal Creek and out back out to the Middle Fork. Um, and I parked my truck in the wrong spot and I came out on Highway 2. And um, I had to hike up the road another couple miles to get back to the truck because I had parked at the wrong trailhead. Just on, 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 I'm, not, I'm, I'm not that smart. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, uh, so then, then the journey, um, we switched into the, uh, back into the Lake McDonald drainage. And um, this is a, a stream running through some of the cedars along Lake McDonald. And... Uh, like I said, I love to photograph birds. And one of my favorite bird photos from the entire journey was this guy right here. Anyone know this, this bird? Yeah. It's a calliope hummingbird. He is about the size of my thumb, see? <laughs> and uh, and I, believe it or not, that's a manual focus lens, and I took it with that lens. And um, that, that's like one of my all-time favorite photos. And this is what the female looks like. So one day, me and the kid... Uh, my wife uh, dropped us off at Avalanche Creek, and then we hiked back to Lake McDonald Lodge. So, like I said, not only was it not contiguous, but we would do chunks at a time, and I would do it on the weekends or whenever I had a day free um, from the basic newspaper, because they, they said, yeah, you're going to do this book, and oh, yeah, by the way, you're going to put the newspaper out, too. And, and, and then, in addition, I serialized the book in the newspaper. So for 12 weeks straight, I wrote a chapter a week. And so, so we, were, we were dropped off at um, Avalanche, and we, did, we know that they didn't, um, the Sun Road didn't exist, but there's still a trail in the woods that runs along the Sun Road. It's, it's, called, the North Lake, it's called the Lake McDonald Trail. And so we were on that, and I'm, and I'm on my, um, um, basically I'm on my back photographing 
So I'm trillium in the spring with this giant cedar in the background. But I'm thinking, I'm thinking about a guy named Tom Narrison. Does anyone here remember Tom Narrison by any chance? Well, this is Tom Narrison. And Tom was jogging on the Lake McDonald Trail. And he ran into two uh, sub-adult grizzly bears. And um, they knocked him over. And he didn't have bear spray. And um, he, he kicked him away. And he used, I think, a stick to get him away from him. But they took off his sneakers. And they bit him in the leg. And Tom, being the tough critter that he is, uh, he ran back to the Sun Road through the woods barefoot, got into his car, and drove himself to the hospital. And so when I'm laying there taking that picture, I'm thinking, he ran into a grizzly bear on this trail? Oh, we get up. I no sooner had I taken that picture of that flower. We hiked probably no more than 25 yards. And what's in the trail? A great big grizzly bear. And I did not get his picture. He was too close. But, but a little bit, uh, the bear took off. But a little bit later, I ran into a black bear. And he was in this little meadow in that woods. And he had been eating dandelions. Well, you know, he was too far uh, away. You know, we yelling. I'm yelling, and I'm trying to get him out of the way. And, but he, he was too far away to spray with bear spray. He was too close to the trail to keep just walk, walk by him. So um, I wanted to get him out of the way. So I just started throwing some small rocks towards him. You know, usually, you know, you throw a rock towards a bear, and it just needs to make a little, you know, plunk in the bushes, and, you know, they take off. And these rocks were bouncing like in front of him, behind him, around him, and he looked around, and he looked at me, and he did, he laid down. <laughs> Swear, to, this is not photoshopped. He laid down on me and sat there. And as you can see, the data line's all over the place. Waited a few more minutes, a couple more rocks. He did, he took, he did, he moved away. He went off into the woods, and we walked by him, and a guy with a pug, and I'm not making this up, without a leash on, was walking down the trail towards me. A little pug dog. And I'm like, sir, please grab that dog. Grab that dog. There's a bear like right up on top of that hill there. <laughs> and he did. So, um, One part of the journey, I rode a bicycle. Um, I did ride a bicycle because the sun, because I didn't want to hike the sun around. So I did ride a bike from the, uh, the Avalanche Creek up to... Uh, Packer's Roost, and on the way, um, I ran into one of my favorite little critters, uh, a snowshoe hare, uh, eating um, breakfast, and some, uh, anyone know this bird? Yeah, it's pine siskins, and they're getting drink along the sun road, and, and so then, um, the next uh, leg of the journey, me and the kid, uh, we hiked up to Granite Park, Chalet, and uh, along the way, we got this... Uh, <coughs> Yeah, I know. What's I know this guy? The grouse? No. No, no, Franklin. It's blue grouse, right? Yeah, male blue grouse. And so this is when um, we, we were hiking up there to recreate uh, the the cover of the book. And like I said, that's probably Howard Eaton, um, either right close to Granite Park or pretty you know pretty near it. Uh, the garden walls in the background, and that would be uh, going to the sun, right? Um, we hiked up there. It was June. It was probably like 85 going up and 95 coming down. And um, the sun was coming over the, uh, the divide there, so I couldn't actually get a picture. I, I wanted someone on, sitting on a horse um, at Granite Park and and I had called Swan Mountain Outfitters ahead of time and found out, so when are you packing up there? Oh, um, well, we'll be packing up. Uh, it was a Saturday. So I go, great, I'll meet you up there. Uh, and, and the packers, they won't mind being on a horse and being in the picture. Like, no, great. Well, Swan Mountain Outfitters generally has, uh, uh, well, not generally, but they have a lot of women that pack for them. So I'm expecting a couple of women up there. And I got uh, uh, Norbert and Randolph. <laughs> <laughs> But they were still very kind-hearted, and they were great. They were great about it because um, we took uh, four pictures with the big camera. I set it all up ahead of time. They came out onto the slope. Um, the guy at Granite Park Chalet said, "Yeah, they can go out there on the slope, even though they're off trail." And, <clears throat> and uh, we got heaven speak in the background. And so 
that was one of the really, um, one of, probably one of my favorite five by seven pictures. And then here they are actually packing into Granite Park. And, and if you thought it was gonna be a fire year, well, this certainly is the, the case because this is June at Granite Park. And there is not a, there is not a, any snow at all. In fact, the glacier lilies were wilting at the time. And sure enough, it wasn't much longer after that that the Reynolds fire started <clears throat> and kind of ruined my plans, at least uh, for a little while. Um, because the next leg of the journey, I was supposed to go up and over Gunsight Pass. And of course, the Reynolds Creek fire started on the 22nd of July, and I was supposed to go over Gunsight Pass on the 24th. And so I had to wait. And here is, I believe, let's see. Uh, let's see if this is going to play. There we go. And that's the Reynolds Creek fire um, on the second day. <clears throat> and you'll see people, um, if you could kill all the, is there any way to kill all the lights? Yeah. Okay. Oh. So I couldn't go to Granite Park, or I'm sorry, I couldn't go over Gunsight Pass, but I could go to Lake Ellen Wilson, or I couldn't go to Gunsight Lake, but I could go to Gunsight Pass. And so I went up to Sperry Chalet en route to Lake Ellen Wilson, and this was this is lunch at, a little food porn for you. Um, this is lunch at Sperry, 10 bucks, a sandwich with uh, um, buttermilk wheat bread. That was a piece of cherry chocolate cake. It's just spectacularly good. And, and then I got my Mary Roberts Reinhardt stand-in um, to, to pack out the horses for me. Um, this was actually a packer. Her name is Elizabeth Neal, and she wants to be an actress in Chicago. Uh, <clears throat> I got to Lake Ellen Wilson and followed the grizzly bears up to... Gunsight Pass, where the park needs to come up with a sign that actually says fire danger. And you can see they scratched out the bear and wrote in fire. <coughs> um, this is this is looking down at Gunsight Lake from Fusillade Mountain in 1915. And this is me looking down at Gunsight Lake from Gunsight Pass in 2015. <coughs> And uh, I should have tucked in my shirt maybe a little better. Um, there's a shelter up there. And so this is the view of Granite Park, or I'm sorry, um, Gunsight Pass through the shelter, which is pretty cool. Uh, if the weather gets really bad, you can jump in that shelter. Um, down at Lake Allen Wilson, um, there, the, the grizzly bear had taken off. And so then we had, the next morning, there was these mountain goats that had come down the trail. And this, this billy was, was really big. I mean, he was probably pushing 250. 275 pound, 275 pounds, and he was so unhappy to see me. And I'm over here, like over, I'm over here taking this picture, and he just started jumping around in in, uh, in circles and watch. I mean, he was literally airborne alongside the trail. <clears throat> he was really unhappy to see me. I don't know, I don't know what I did, to be honest with you. Um, but then um, on the way out, there were some nannies uh, who were a little more photogenic, and that's Lake Ellen Wilson. This is my favorite picture from the whole shoot match. And uh, this is the Gunsight Pass Trail. How many people have done Gunsight Pass Trail? Yeah, it's worth it, right? Absolutely. Yeah, 4,000 vertical in a day um, if you go all the way to Gunsight Pass. So it's pretty cool. And then on the way down, um, I got a barred owl in a tree. Yeah, in the woods. And so I'm sitting there with this camera um, taking pictures of the barred owl. And people are like, what are you looking at? I go, there's a grizzly bear in the tree. Can't you see it? <laughs> Like they're like no, I'm like well because there's an owl in the tree. Can't you see that? And they're like, no. <laughs> I go here. Look through the camera. It's right. He, he, he was he was just off the trail. Um, this is actually probably a juvenile. In fact, I'm almost positive it's a juvenile because the ma the mother took off up above me. Um, so now we're back down to Lake McDonald. The next leg of my journey, I go to um, Many Glacier, and this is. Uh, Mary Roberts Reinhardt camp in in Many Glacier, and uh, and if you <clears throat> and today yeah you can just go and set up a tent out there. Park Service won't give you a hard time at all. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, in fact, 
I went to Many Glacier, in, like I said, in February. Just so, um, they, they camped near, what they said was near the town of Alton. And what I think this was, and um, there's some park people here who could probably tell me, uh, my guess is because this is Alton here, and then this would be, I think, Wayne, um, that this was probably that big kind of open area just before the sewage treatment plant sheep curve, maybe. That's what I'm thinking. Either that or it was even farther back on Windy Flats, maybe. Um, but this is, <laughs> they, they said that, she, she said, Mary said, that they went, they camped near the town of Alton. Well, this is what's left of the town of Alton today, and this is what it looked like in February of, of 2015. Um, and it's just, I just love that tree out there. And you really have to go in the winter to photograph it, because generally this area is off, off limits in the summertime because of the bears. There's always bears eating the berries there. But it's just a great, just a great spot in the wintertime. And uh, the, the cool thing about being in many in the wintertime is that you never know what kind of weather you're going to get. And the weathermen had said that you can expect, when I was, ba when I was back there in February, they are like, expect a cold front to drop down from the north and the temperatures will drop um, from, they were about 25 to 30, and they will drop below zero. And it literally happened in I want to say 10 minutes because I was photographing these sheep and they just disappeared. <laughs> and and, I, and it was even hard to breathe. It was so it was so uh, windy and um, nasty out. And this was actually way up on the flank of Mount Alton. I came back in April and went back to Many Glacier again. I went into the Swift Current Valley uh, several times over the course of this for the course of this book, and in by April, um, not all the sheep make it. <clears throat> and yes, I did leave that there. <laughs> um, this is right in the Swift Current Pass Trail. And here, the, here's some uh, bighorn sheep feeding um, along the flank of Mount Wilbur. Now, I took this picture in April, and I'm sitting like back here. After I took this photo, I had on a hooded sweatshirt. I got back down to my, down to the trail, and I literally emptied the ticks out of my hood. Yeah. See what I go through? You all have to buy a book. Hey, I got, I got Colorado tick fever once. It was awful. Yeah, I thought that, that was the closest I ever felt to dying. It wasn't during this book, but it was another one. And he had been in like, you know, I didn't know anything about ticks, and he'd been in my belly button for like a week. Yeah, yeah I got really ill. Um, <clears throat> And just as an aside, they make you bend over and they give you a gigantic shot right in the butt of tetracycline. <laughs> it's not a lot of fun. <laughs> What's that? Too much information. Yeah, I'm sorry. <clears throat> uh, this is en route to um, Swift Current Pass. And this is, a, anybody know what this guy is doing, what, what it's called? There's actually a term for this. Birds do it all the time. It's called tipping. And they get on a stalk. And they tip it over, and then they eat the, the seeds on the end. Of course, not every, uh, all creatures great and small. Here's a grizzly bear. I'm not anywhere near as close as, you might, as it looks to this grizzly you saw in her two cubs. Uh, they were eating huckleberries below the swift current pasture. I saw more grizzlies on this trip than I did black bears. I only saw, I think I saw two black bears, and I saw six or seven grizzlies. The closest grizzly was 20 feet. Yeah, and I thought he was a black bear. And I, was, I came up the top of the trail, and there was this big black hump there. And I'm like, oh, black bear. And it turned around, and I'm like, oh, grizzly. And I, I went down that trail quick. <laughs> he, he left. Um, here we are at, uh, <clears throat> up at the top of Swift Current Pass. Living in Glacier is tough on critters. Look at this nanny. She only has one horn. It's not an easy life up there. Unless, of course, you're a newlywed. <laughs> and, I, and I took this picture, and I'm like, somebody with a red umbrella at Grinnell Lake? Are you, are you kidding me? I couldn't, I couldn't ask for a better, better opportunity. And they got done, and I asked them their names. And I can't, their name is, excuse me, their name escapes me now. But they said, you know, we're newlyweds. And I go, yeah, you know, I wouldn't have guessed. <laughs> wouldn't have, never occurred to me. In 1915, they were, snow, they were tobogganing 
without a toboggan. And um, I'm not good enough to know my passes, but I want to say that might be close to Pigan. That might be Pigan. And this is Pigan in 2015. Uh, this is later on in the summer. Um, we had that one great rain that uh, it, it, that's pretty much put the wildfires out. And this was uh, en route to Pigan Pass, and uh, that's my that's the kid. Um, and he uh, and it was just it just poured, and no one complained. In fact, he's wearing a short sleeve sweatshirt or shorts. He's wearing a t-shirt, and it was snowing at the top. And he's, I still couldn't get him to put on a coat. <laughs> Uh, this is uh, now. This is what, what she calls Ptarmigan Pass, and I'm not sure where that is. But apparently, those are the two mountain goats that they're talking about right there. This is 1915. Like I said, we went to Ptarmigan Tunnel, and on the way to Ptarmigan Tunnel, um, Hunter uh, is my son's name, and he was carrying a bunch of stuff. He was he wasn't carrying too much stuff, but I was carrying this camera and the big pack, and we were passing. A bunch of uh, backpackers that were, you know, they were going to the, into the Belly River. They were kind of big and out of shape, and we were passing them. And I was joking with them. Well, I go, you know, why we're so fast is because my kid behind me, uh, he uh, he carries all the stuff. Well, unbeknownst to me, he got a nosebleed, and he was covered in blood when we got to Tarmigan Tunnel. So I got to Tarmigan Tunnel, and I had made this joke along the trail, passing all these people for probably a mile, well, from the lake all the way to the tunnel. Well, you know how far, the, and anyone who's done that trail knows it's, it's a pretty good ways. And he was covered in blood. And this is the looks I got when we got there. Um, yeah, we're not going to look at that guy. Uh, <laughs> and, and I felt like a heel, but I'm like, you know, what am I going to do? I'm sorry. <laughs> so I cleaned him up, and he was fine. But... Um, it was just, you know how nosebleeds are. They just bleed all over the place. This is the amount. This is, this is from Mary. Um, I won't read it to you. I think it's a little bit of a hyperbole. But then uh, we, this is, I believe this is the view from Sai Pass because um, she talks about Barren Creek. Well, if that's Barren Creek, that would be, have to be Sai Pass. And so we went up there. Uh, to like I said, we want to photograph all the places that we, um, that she had been, and she may have been right because this is what the winds were like. We talked about hurricane force winds, and he wasn't stumbling around because I'd I'd given him Benadryl. <laughs> it was it was really it was extremely windy. We didn't even make it to the pass, so it was yeah it was pretty. But it was beautiful. Oops. Uh, let's see if we can back that up. There we go. Is it back up? Yeah. <laughs> it was gorgeous on the way down, though. And this is this is um, Preston Park. <laughs> and I took that in black and white. I just like the contrast of the black and white and the, the ribbon of the stream. How many people have been to Preston Park? Oh, geez. If you haven't been to Preston Park, you really need to go. So the next leg of our journey, we're, we're going into the Red Eagle. <clears throat> Red Eagle Lake uh, area, which is one of my favorites, uh, Indian paintbrush, um, and uh, yellow warblers having bad hair days. <clears throat> and one of the mo uh, one of my favorite quotes from the book from Mary um, is is this one, and I, uh, I won't read it to you, but uh, th this is fr fr from her uh, journey at Red Eagle Lake. Can everyone read that? That. Yes, yeah, a couch for a queen, right? Couch for a queen. We had a, a, a slightly different experience. Me and the kid went in there, and um, it poured. It, like, like, 2015 was maybe the driest summer on record, or one of them, hot, dry, and it dumped on us when we were in there. And I couldn't get, the, even the gas stove, I couldn't get it lit because my flint and my um, lighter got wet. So I couldn't, and so what we had for supper was the good old Cliff Bar. Now, how many people are here have eaten a Cliff Bar? How many people like them? Okay, there's a couple, three. I think I see three. Well, you know, I have the same experience with Cliff Bars, and they're they're not they're not awful. I mean, they're not terrible. But 
I, I always got, like, there's, there's kind of a weird, kind of a nasty aftertaste sometimes. And so I got to look, and I was laying in the tent looking at the, and looking at the ingredients. And so, so here you go. Um, here's the, here's the clip. <laughs> Take a taste. Tell me. And what, what really, what I'm wondering is, okay, but 70% organic, okay? Which means the other 30%, I think those are the black toenails. Is that, is that going to get me sued? Are you not, could you, could you erase that part of the tape? Thank you. Like I said, it poured, poured that night, but then it was worth it because this is Ready Go Lake the next morning. And I've been to Red Eagle Lake several times during the summer, and there's but always been a moose out there, a big bull moose. He comes out there and he feeds. And I, sometimes he'll even walk through camp. And I didn't see him out in the lake, and I was like, oh, I wonder if that moose is going to show up. And sure enough, he did. But he showed up in the creek. So it was still cool. There he is. Take him with a big gonzo lens. Um, you, know, you know, the park really... Uh, you know, tells you not to get close to the bears, but you really don't want to get close to a moose. I would, I would much rather, I, I, you know, I'll be honest, I, I think I'd rather run into a bear. Um, Mary laments that, uh, so we, we were going to go over Triple Divide Pass, and then someone pointed out me this error, but she laments uh, uh, crossing, uh, getting to Triple Divide. She wanted to be the first woman to get to Triple Divide Pass. And she she complains in her book that there was already some girls up there, and it ruined her day. <laughs> now, and, and Mary, by the way, was a, was a mystery writer. I didn't talk too much about Mary, but Mary was a famous mystery writer. And this, and this book here was kind of a side project, and she's best known um, for, like, the butler did it. Um, they, they attributed that to her, although none of her books, I think, actually say that. Um, so she complained about being a triple divide, not being, not being the first person on a triple divide. The, par, the problem with that is that someone pointed out to me that this is not triple divide. This is actually Pitamake. Yeah, and that this is the trail, and then you go up and over. Yeah, you go up and over Pitamake. You know, you're going around. So the book, the book, even back then had typos, and I was like, yay! <laughs> if I make a mistake, but this is what the real triple divide looks like. And this little guy here is a marmot. And I had stopped, and we were, me and the kid are sitting there eating lunch. And he got his, one of them grabbed the strap to that uh, Leica digital camera that I was showing you. And he started taking off with it, bouncing along the rocks. Yeah, yeah, the camera cost $7,000. <laughs> I'm sorry, there was almost one less marmot in Glacier. Don't tell the park service. No, I got, I got, it, I got it from him. And then... Uh, this was uh, Cut Bank in 1915. Uh, this is the Cut Bank. Uh, one of, part of the Cut Bank Chalet uh, um, oh, I, complex, I guess you'd call it. These are all wiped out now. And I'm still not quite sure exactly uh, where that would have been. I, I want to say maybe it was in a meadow, um, a little bit, uh, maybe down in here somewhere. Um, this is what it looks like today. This, is, this, this picture is not in the book. I just put that in there just as a reference. Cup Anchor hasn't changed much. Uh, Old Man Lake. Pitamakan Pass. And then this would have been, this is down to Cup Bank Pass is down here. <clears throat> One thing to notice is that this is after the fires. So you can see just how far up. This is the Thompson fire that was in, in uh, the Nyack Cold Creek drainage. And look how these guys were doing the um, Continental Divide Trail. They were almost done. So I camped down in Morningstar Lake. And I really expected to see a lot of big critters, but all I, all I, I just had this uh, beaver in the lake. And Morningstar Lake lived up to its name at night. <clears throat> and the next morning. And uh, what's really cool is that Glacier has some really, uh, um, really cool critters um, that aren't uh, ones that we necessarily pay attention to, but it has tailed frogs. See, it's got a tail. Yeah. And so the last leg of my journey, I had to, um, I had to get back to Gunsight Lake. <clears throat> and so I followed the mountain lion tracks up the trail to the lake. 
and it's like in the morning, and said goodnight to the moon. Take a kid for a hike. Thank you very much. Uh, does anyone have any questions?